Hello everyone. Welcome back to Introduction to Machine Learning. Today we will learn overfitting and underfitting in machine learning models. Let's consider a forecasting model and the points that you see on the screen are data instances and their values over time. And we want to fit a model to this data so that we can forecast what instance would occur next. So to do that, first let's consider a very simple forecasting model, which is a linear model. So in this linear model is a line, right? So it'll a line that passes through these data points. As you can see, the line and the data points are not really aligned. It's not really capturing the pattern that exists in the data. It's going through maybe like one, two to three points and the error is greater than 50%. So this is the simplest model that we are just considering. Now let's consider a slightly more complex model. So in this model, we are considering a curve, a polynomial that goes, that captures the overall trend in the data. Is it going through all the data points? No. It's going through some of the data points, yes. And is it capturing the overall pattern that exists in the data? I would say yes, because it is, visually you can see that it is fitting the data. And the error, let's assume the error to be close to 10% because the points are here closer to the model. Uh, and um, unlike the previous slide where we saw the points are far away from the line. Now let's consider another model. Now here we are fitting the curve to pass through each and every data point. So it's capturing the, oh, it's not capturing the overall trend, but it is fitting each and every data point. So is this a more complex model than the one we saw last? Yes. But is this a better model than what we saw last? That is something that we have to now understand. So the error here is less than one person because it is going through almost all data points. But even then, this is not a better model than the curve that we saw. Because this model, the model on the right, has too much complexity. So we call such a model which has more than enough complexity, uh, way more complexity than what we require to be a model that overfits. The model on the left fits the data and the model that we first saw, the line, the linear model, underfits the data, which means that it is not capturing the pattern of the data. So in machine learning, you want to create models that fit the data, but not overfit or neither underfit. So coming back to the classification world, overfitting in classification would look something like this. So let's, there is a black curve and there is a green curve. So the black curve separates the two sets of points, right? So you can clearly see that there's blue on the top and red on the bottom. But there are some red dots, dots are all data instances, some data, red data instances that are on the blue side and some blue data instances on the red side. But the black line captures the overall demarcation that exists in, in the space, in the data space. But what about the green line? So it is making sure that each and every blue and red um, data instances are in the right side so it is separating having a more intense separation here so now tell me which one is better I would say the black one because the black one captures the overall trend and the green line or the green model is overfitting for this particular prediction problem so to understand overfitting, we introduce the concept of Occam's razor. Occam's razor is a simple principle. It says all other things being equal, 
the simplest solution is the best. Which is to say that when multiple competing theories are equal in other respects, for example, um, always there's a trade-off between performance and the complexity of the model. The more complex the model is, the better the performance. But too much complexity can hurt performance as well and cannot give you a generalizable solution, which is why we want the simplest hypothesis that fits the data. So we don't want something that underfits either, but we don't want something that overfits. So we want the simplest one that fits the data. A simpler hypothesis is less likely to be correct by chance and is therefore more likely to generalize well. So what does it mean by generalization? By generalization, we mean newer data instances that may become available in the future or are part of a separate test set. So how does your model generalize to those data instances? So that is the main problem in machine learning. There's always data that is yet to become available that is part of a test set or that is um, held out for only evaluation purposes. So you want your model to perform well in that scenario and that's what you want to optimize for. So if you find the pattern, the underlying pattern that exists in the data, then that would generalize better than if you fit, overfit the model to each and every data instance there is in the data that's available to you because there's always data that you don't know about and you don't know how the data looks. So you want your model to be able to generalize to that data. So if we have two hypotheses with equally small training error, how can we pick the right one? If we pick the wrong one with enough data, we'll eventually find out. So if you are conflicted, if you have two hypotheses, you are unable to choose with more data, you'll likely know which one is inherently better for, for the data. And the next question is how much data do we need? The amount of data depends on the complexity. The more complex the model, more amount of data you need to verify if it is true. Think about the complex polynomials examples that we had both for forecasting and for the classification. So to, for that to be true, you need way more data instances that can verify that these these complex polynomials are in fact the actual pattern, underlying pattern of the data. So to avoid the possibility of overflitting, we should restrict the complexity of the hypothesis class. So that's what we do. So we, let's say polynomial, if we want to do polynomial, we don't go for a really a big um, degree polynomial rather choose a simpler, like a second order or a lower order polynomial to restrict the complexity of the hypothesis class. And you don't want to do too much of that, then it would go underfit. So with good amount of experimentation and trial and error, we can arrive at the right complexity of the model for the data in question.